Hey, this is George. Welcome to Denim House of Pizza. Come on back and take a tour. Because a kiosk never forgets to upsell, right? Yeah. I mean, we might be busy. Uh, we forget to ask the customer if they like a soda, a chip, some dessert. Kiosk is always going to remember. It's never going to forget. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we're up to three. We've uh, been a food tech customer since uh, 2005. So that's when I graduated from high school. Uh, my mom and I kind of sat down. And she's like, she she, uh, she owned uh, many Dairy Queens, Dairy Queen franchise. We oh, had really? three stores at one point. So kind of, she knows the business, yeah. right? Um, and she she told me, she said, uh, "Will you help me modernize the operations?" And uh, I was excited about it. You know, she kind of told me, "In a few years from now, you can be making this much money." You know, kind of motivate. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was exciting. Uh, we started with uh, just uh, I think one computer at the time, then brought in two. Uh, we've had them since. Uh, you guys come on in. Don't yeah. be shy. Uh, the courts were uh, really uh, booming in Dedham, and we had lines outside the door. So I remember looking at the line. I'm like, Dad, I don't think I can do this. She's like, one at a time. One at a time. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, pen and paper. Back oh in the wow. Day. Yeah. How? When did you? So now you have food tech, right? We have food tech solutions. Um, at the time, the front of the store was a little smaller. You know the story that people talk about standing on a milk crate. Yeah. Right? It, it's actually a real thing. Yeah. You know, standing on a milk crate. You know, shortly thereafter, we were, I was working the front, um, and uh, I've been here since I was, uh, I was a little kid, eight years old. Making, making pizza? Not pizza, but I was making salad. Oh, okay. I was putting the olives on the salad. Nice. My dad's like, four tomatoes on the salad. <laughs> the four tomatoes on the salad. That's great. Um, uh, my father had just come from uh, Greece, immigrated to the USA. Do you speak Greek? I do. Nice. Yeah, it was my first language. Was it really? So, um, it, it got sold to uh, another gentleman uh, who actually moved it here. This store was separated in two. It was like a deli and a bakery. Oh. So the, the wall that you see right here was uh, two separate stores. So when that gentleman came in, he separ uh, he opened the store up, made it a pizzeria. Uh, so it's an interesting story over the years. So what style of pizza do you make here? Uh, Greek style pizza. I and, love Greek uh, pizza. It is, it's the best, yeah. in my opinion. It's like a New England thing. Though. Right. Not that many people, when I say, so obviously I live in the Boston area, you as we do, and we do the podcast uh, that reaches people all across the country. And when I say Greek pizza, they're like, what's that? What is it? I'm like, it's like a, I don't know, it's, it's, how would you describe Greek pizza? Well, we have some over here, Bruce. Yeah. Uh, it's a pan style pizza. It's a little bit on the thicker side. Yeah. So these, uh, these were made fresh today. So the, the dough is still rising. You can see it's bubbled up a little bit over yeah. here. So we like to bring it up to uh, more of a thicker crust and a thinner crust. So it's almost like if you took a Italian pizza yep. in a, deep dish pizza yep the way that they make the deep dish pizza and put it together put it together not like the ingredients on a deep dish no pizza, no no but it's like, the offspring of those two yeah. pizzas put together but it's an easy way to make pizza because not that it's easy right because nothing's easy right but it's easier it must be easier to train somebody how to make that style pizza than yep. an italian style because you like thin spots are harder with when you're making it by hand and stretching it out that's right so this is easy because um yeah, it's made for volume, right? I can't imagine, you know, getting an order for 20 pizzas, and, you know, stretching out the dough, putting the semolina down, uh, and then throwing it in the oven. Right. And with these conveyor belt ovens, uh, we could uh, we could cook about 20 pizzas on the top one at a time, 20 pizzas on the bottom one, and they come out every seven minutes, so right. two, four pizzas at a time. What's the name of the oven? These are uh, XLT ovens. I have uh, two of the uh, conveyor for the pizzas, and we also have uh, a, a new acquisition over here. It's an XLT toaster oven. Oh, nice! Uh, so that one was uh, that one was awesome. But I waited a year to get that uh, during COVID. What's that for? Uh, that's for uh, toasting subs, so we don't occupy the space inside the pizza oven. Oh, gotcha. Uh, also for uh, throwing some pasta in there. Yeah, yeah. I use it for a little bit of uh, catering as well. Yep. Um, but. Uh, you know, it took me a year and it's in Kansas City. If I had known that, I would have driven to Kansas City and picked it up myself. Oh, nice. I really needed it, but it, it's a great oven. What percentage of subs or, do you do to pizza? Like, how many pizzas do you do in a night? Uh, we do, let's say on average, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll do 250 pizzas a day. Wow. And uh, for subs, probably like, well, like 130. Really? So, you know, 50% or yeah, whatever, that's whatever great. that comes out to. Pe are, are pizzas easier for you? Would you rather do pizzas? I'd rather do the pizzas. Yeah, same. Yeah. I remember working at the pizza shop. Subs were kind of a pain in the butt. It's so many variables. People right. like them certain ways. Right. Not that people don't like their pizza certain ways, but say there's four people eating together. Yep. And you get four subs mm -hmm. or two pizzas. So much easier to make two pizzas. It's than so it much four easier. different subs. Right. The mistakes we always used to make because people would be like, "All right, I want this, but I don't know what that is," or mm -hmm. you forgot a topping, or you forgot the utensils. Yep. I always wanted to make pizza way more than I wanted. Pizza's to make great. Like you said, there are a lot of variables when it comes to making a sub. 
uh, it can get confusing because sometimes there's so many topics. Yeah. You forget one, your customer gets upset. Yeah. And obviously, we train a lot of new people. We have uh, uh, a, a lot of people inside the kitchen. It's about 25 of us. Wow. Not all at once, but uh, 25 employed. And getting everybody on the same page to make the sub the same way, put the toppings in the same manner, um, is uh, it's very difficult. Yeah, it's, it's it was too difficult for me. I would never do it again. Right. And I wouldn't wish anybody. I feel bad for people who have like sub shops. Was, yep. I think we were doing a show last week with uh, Anthony from Auto Pizza. Yeah. And he's making like sub rolls in the dough factory. And I said to him, I said, you should do like auto sub shop. He's like, no, you should do auto sub shop. He's like, I'm not doing that. You should do that. I'm not doing subs. I do pizza and that's all I do. I'm like, you know what? You're probably right. All right, so we're back in the kitchen. I'm going to do some dough now. So uh, we made a small batch. Uh, we already made our pizzas for the day, but I was expecting you, Bruce. All right. So uh, I made a small batch over here to kind of show you how we do things. Very nice. Now this should give us about like 60 pizzas or so. Did you cut and roll it all by hand? Yeah, well, we cut it by hand. We're going to we're gonna make a, you know, fold it into yeah. balls, roll it into balls. All right. We have our uh, Somerset, uh, you know, dough flattener. I don't know, what would we call this? Uh, divider? Uh, no, not a, not a divider, rounder. That would be a yeah. stretcher, dough stretcher. Yeah. Dough stretcher, yeah. right? So, uh, you know, old school, we got the uh, the old school scale. I don't use a digital scale for the, uh, for the pizzas. But um, let's see what you got. Let's see if you remember, Bruce. I remember. You were just rolling right in a ball? Yeah, just a ball. Is that good? That's good. All right. I got to get my groove, so give me a All second. Right, let's here. see. There we go. How do I do? How do I do? Not bad. You're hired, brother. All right. What are you doing Monday through Friday? Monday through Friday, I'm pretty free. I do a couple podcasts, talk to some folks. But other than that, I'm, I'm all around. How many how many dough balls do you put in a tray? Usually, uh, it, it depends on uh, you know how uh, the quality of the dough. You know how uh, how moist it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What season it is. Yeah. So right now we're gonna do four. Um, in the summertime, sometimes with the humidity, we do three because okay. it uh, tends to stick together and we like to give it some space. She's pretty good too, though. She's great. Cecilia has been here for uh, a couple of years. <laughs> nice. Yep. Uh, she does prep. She comes and opens the store every morning with a couple other folks. How many do, how many batches of dough do you make a day? Uh, well, let's uh, focus on the, the end of the week, I guess, uh, Thursdays through Sundays. Or a week. It's a 60-quart mixer. Yep. Uh, so yesterday was... Um, Yesterday was Sunday. We made uh, six batches of dough. Oh, wow. Yeah, Sundays are uh, our busiest day. There are a lot of pizzerias that uh, close on Sundays. So we kind of pick up the slack uh, from other businesses being yeah, closed. Yeah. Patriots on too, a local local football team. The Patriots are yeah. Even though they stink this year. Hey, it, it helps. <laughs> football helps us. Yeah, right. And uh, hockey too. The other sports really don't do much for us. Baseball. Yeah, right? Yeah. Basketball never did much, no. unless it was the playoffs. Yeah, basketball doesn't do Football much always either. did good. Football always does well. Do you have like specials that you have for football or do you do specials? Absolutely. So we run a lot of our specials. They're uh, online specials available only um, online. Yeah. It gives people an incentive to order from you online. Order from us online and help us, uh, you know, minimize the phone calls coming in. That's great. So how'd uh, I do? You did great. They look professional. Nice. They might be better than mine, to be honest <laughs> with you. I think, I, I don't know how many dough balls I've rolled, but we used to, so we started like that. Mm -hmm. And then we had, so we did not Greek pizza, but it was like Greek Italian pizza. It was like on a screen, same kind of oven. And we started rolling dough balls. And then uh, my brother-in-law, who's my partner, bought a div big divider. It was like a, like you throw the, you, you, throw the whole batch in there. Yep. 50 pound batch of dough and he would just cut it and roll it up. Wow. Life changed after that. Well, it went can... down from taking like three hours. How long did it take you to make those six batches of dough? Like three hours? Yeah, maybe more. Yeah. It went to that, it would cut it in half. Right. The so, thing for us is space. Yeah. You know, we're a small store. This is our, this is our pizza counter, our prep counter. What's right there? Uh, over here? Yeah. This is uh, the door that goes uh, downstairs to the basement. Uh, I was going to say, it would fit right here. It would fit perfectly <laughs> yeah. right here. You go right yeah. Here. yeah. And, you know, we don't have a dishwashing station either where it's an old store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't built according to modern day spe uh, specificities. Is that the word? Um, it's, a, it's like a lot of New England stores are like this. So a lot of New England stores are kind of like yours did, right? You start small and then you kind of expand from there and you kind of fit into the space that you have. Right. It's not like you... I'm sure if you were to do this place all over again, oh, it'd be a whole different you would story. totally do it differently. Yeah, You'd make it everything was had a spot and was specifically made right. for it versus like, all right, we need this. Where can we fit it? 
Yeah, even the rounder would help us too. Yeah. You know, but they're about this big, right? Yeah, they're pretty big. So it's on wheels. I figured maybe like I could kind of roll it into this corner as we're cutting it, having it rounded. They make one that goes on the table. Yeah, I don't like that one. It's a circular one. Yeah, like whoop, 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 yeah. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. I prefer to get the one that you toss yeah. and yeah. it comes up. That's the one we use. Yeah. That was great. It saves so much time. Absolutely. All right, Bruce, I'm gonna move this right over here. We were just talking about your boxes too, how you have like your own custom boxes. And I'm sure if you drive around your city, yep. you'll probably see a ton of boxes on trash day. Oh, we do. It's a great opportunity to get like people to know, oh yeah, I eat that pizza place too. Absolutely. So, so many places use generic pizza boxes. And I'm like, why do you use generic pizza boxes? It's like a, it's a marketing opportunity. It makes you seem more professional, even if you're not. It sure does. It makes you seem like you have your stuff together. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, you know, usually I let the dough proof a little bit, yeah. but for the purpose of our video today, I'm setting it through. It's a little soft, so it's a little uh, it's a little harder to work with, but... Uh, and then it sits in the pan, and then you kind of push it out on the pan? Yeah, so we'll just do, uh, we'll do two more over here. We'll yep. send this one through. We'll send another one. And after this, we'll go uh, kind of straight into uh, opening the pies. What I mean by that, you know, is I'll, uh, we'll grab the dough, takes a little bit of technique. It's, uh, you know, it's really hard to manage your first couple times trying to make a uh, Greek style pizza, but uh, it's pan pizza. So we try to leave a little bit of crust on it because uh, this will rise and it will become much thicker. So we have our uh, first pizza right here. Put a spoonful of sauce on there. We'll sauce them up, leave about an inch or so of crust and uh, we'll just start stacking them up and then as soon as we have those opened and ready to go uh, someone else will come back and they'll they'll cheese them so they're nice and ready to go for so on a friday uh, night you're making all your pizzas kind of ahead of time you know how many you're going to sell you oh, look absolutely. at your point of sale system you'll be like all right i think we're going to sell 150 pizzas tonight yeah Just close to 500 head. probably really yeah so we'll do that this whole counter uh you know we move the slicer down a little bit it will be filled you know it's about 30 pizzas per stack they fit uh from top to bottom so we'll have hundreds over here uh, we'll also have some space in the front and uh, as soon as they're uh, risen and ready to go, we'll put them in the fridge. You know, and this isn't our usual routine, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot more organized than this. We have a few people back here. We're passing all the dough through the machine at the same time. This is just for the podcast. This is just for the podcast. This is just for behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. A little house sneak of pizza. Peek. That's right. What's the saying they say? This is how the what's made? What do they say? It's how the sausage yeah, is made. Yeah, this is how the sausage is made. <laughs> Great. So that's that. So when you're making pizza on a Friday night, then you can in the morning prep all this up and then yep. just have one guy kind of top it, right? Exactly. Yeah, we used to have three guys. Yeah, we'll have five people here. Really? Because uh, all the pans that are under here, they you come to the reuse top. them? Oh yeah, we reuse them sometimes. So we do about, you know, 400, 500 pizzas on a Friday between small and large. Uh, the smalls are prepared a little bit differently. Um, those are already in the fridge. They've been proofed. They've been risen. They're ready to go for yeah. today. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's for a small mom and pop place. Listen, uh, a lot of people the... are watching this right now and they, they want to, you know, start a pizzeria or grow a pizzeria in that's kind of why we're showing all different kinds of all kinds of different pizza shops that absolutely you know, everybody can kind of decide what they want to do for themselves there's a lot of pizza shops. there's so many different that's the cool thing about pizzas there's so much variety yeah of whether what kind of style you like you right. know is it italian greek style mm -hmm. pan chicago there's so many different styles. detroit so many different styles popping up it's amazing and it's so versatile it it's is. like i was talking to somebody the other day and i said it's so expensive to go to mcdonald's it is you know if yeah. you take your kids to mcdonald's yep. It's it's it used to be a fun place where you'd be like, all right, let's go get a snack. But now it's like expensive. It is. You can get two pizzas. You could. And it still feed, feed the, the whole, whole family. family. Yeah. Versus and it's better for you. Absolutely. So, yeah, this is the station. Oh, these are the kiosks, Bruce. We have two kiosks right now. Uh, these were specifically made for us. It wasn't like a streamlined process. It took me actually six to eight months to get this going. So uh, we found the right type of screens we uh, we needed. We worked with uh, Food Tech Solutions to kind of uh, to help get us up and running. I'd say that the most difficult part about the kiosks was finding a place where they'd sit. So I called someone out to make a table for me, build a table. And he told me he wanted $8,000 to build a table, <laughs> right? That's probably what the kiosk Yeah. Was. So I, uh, I built it out of wood myself and then I had a granite company come out and dress it with granite. And originally it was on this back wall here. So when the customers walked in, they kind of passed by it. You know, it was kind of out of sight, out of mind, and we didn't really have a great uh, user base. But since we brought it up front, people will come in, they'll hit the start order button, they, they could, you know, choose if it's for here to go. 
and uh, everything is photographed. It's, it's all of our food, so you'll see the pizzas here. Uh, you'll see the hot subs, you know, our dinners, for instance, our salads, uh, r right down to, uh, you know, everything. The drinks are photographed, the chips are photographed. So everything that you see on the menu is actually what they're gonna get? Absolutely, yeah. You know, well, with, uh, with the exception, like, you know, they're in a glass bowl, but it's gonna right. be in a to-go right. container. But we have a lot of compliments on our website because what you see here is what you get on the website as well. So all these photographs uh, are available on the website. Uh, you can input your information for uh, your loyalty points. Uh, we have a strong loyalty rewards program. We have an SMS marketing plan. Uh, we have a strong email program as well. And it all runs through uh, this, this company and this system. So I don't have to have, uh, you know, uh, outsource uh, each one of those programs to a different company. That's good. something you can pick up over here? Uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Is that something that you're looking at? That's something that I, I would love to do, yeah. but uh, it's going to require some sort of like digital infrastructure in the back because if the customer comes to pick up here and they pay for their order, you know, how do we, how do we know that the customer's here? Kind of a thing. So we would probably need like a small screen in the back that dings and let us know that customer for order number 100 is here. We got the fire fire trucks going by. <laughs> Live yeah. going right so these are not made in house, but anything Greek you see the baklava, the portakalopita, the baklava cheesecake. Uh, these are actually all made in Greece and they're frozen and sent here and distributed through the U.S. Um, the other ones are made from um, some of the addresses are on here. There's some places in Long Island, Whitestone Expressway. It's uh, it's incredible. I'd never had dessert before. We brought it in about two years ago. I had it in that small cooler, which you see where we have the beer and wine in, and it wasn't really selling because that is a uh, rare loading cooler. Yes. So we would have to go and kind of take it out for the customer. I found this used cooler. I had it delivered here. Uh, we loaded it up with dessert. Delicious. My favorite is the uh, chocolate mousse cake. I should probably cut back on it a little <laughs> bit, but uh, yeah. All right, so if you had to give someone who's looking to start a pizza shop, either they have one and they want to take it to the next level or they want to start one, what's the advice you would give them to start? Depending on your experience and your team, you know, start slow, right? Because you try to go in and you try to do big things. You open up the first week, a lot of mistakes being made. You can't uh, really take care of your customers well. They're going to get that negative impression from the beginning. You know, start slow, buy one pizza oven, don't buy your second one. Yeah. You know, get into the rhythm, get into the funk of doing things, purchase your second one, grab a third one if you need it, and uh, familiarize yourself with the equipment. Because it's not just about running the store, but if something breaks down and it's busy, how are you going to get it up and running as quick as possible? Yeah. Friday I came in and uh, I go over to the grill and the back of the grill is on fire. <laughs> Literally. Nobody saw it except me, right? The, the gas line is on fire, Bruce. So I, I needed to know where the gas line was so I could shut it down, right? And uh, a lot of people who just built a store, they may not know where it is. Someone else to the gas and, and the electric. I shut it down. You have to have a good team of uh, people who can come out and help you quickly. So Friday, you can imagine we need to boost the sales. It's a great sales day. I had a uh, plumber come out within minutes to help us replace the gas line, get back up and running. It's um, funny, you know what? My wife never would believe me, but when we when I was operating the pizzeria, you become like a handyman, yes. a refrigeration guy, yes. a plumber, a, you know, a tile guy. Absolutely. Anything that happens, you're like, all right, can I fix this by myself without having to have someone come in here and do it? Right. And if I can, I'm gonna try. Right. Because like you said, the cooler goes down. Even if and it always happens to be on Friday or Saturday, the cooler never breaks on a Monday. Mm -hmm. It's always on like the busiest day. And if the cooler breaks and you, all your stuff's in there, you got to do Friday. You can't have no cooler. You can't. You got to figure out a way to get that thing going. Yeah. So know your equipment. You know, there's easy ways to get up and running sometimes. It, it, right down to a fuse. It could be a simple thing. Yeah. You have some extra fuses, pop in an extra fuse. Um, really do your research. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you have a friend who owns a pizzeria, uh, you know, go and try and shadow them for the day. Yeah. Um, and uh, immerse yourself in it it's not something that you could do just kind of for an investment if you want to be successful right, that's a great piece of advice i always tell people if you want to open a pizza shop go work in one right you could come to some guy like yourself and say hey listen i'm thinking about opening a pizza shop you mm -hmm. mind if i just work here for free for a week yep You'll be like okay yeah help me out for yeah. a week for free right recommendations is get to know your distributors yes. right because you may not be familiar with the product uh, you know ask them to bring you samples of different pepperonis cook them uh taste it you know bring your family in for a taste testing don't just grab you know, something random, throw it on and, yeah. and cook it. Um, and you have to have a strong team behind you. Yeah. Is it hard to find employees nowadays? Uh, it was. The last five years was uh, extremely difficult. But we've been lucky because uh, I have a good eye for, you know, character and for people. So yeah. when somebody comes through the door, I can identify right away from speaking with them if they're going to be a leader. How do you do that? Is there any certain questions you ask? Uh, no. It's just like your it's gut feeling. It's just my gut feeling. It is your gut. You do have to go with your gut sometimes. Right.
Right. So someone could be a professional interviewer. Mm -hmm. That means they're really great in the interview, and then they come in and they're a disaster. Exactly. But you, sometimes your gut's like, this person almost seems too good to be true. And it's, uh, I always try to find someone who uh, is like a family man or family yeah. woman or family person, right? Uh, it, like, for instance, we have uh, a wonderful woman who's been working for me for four years. Over the years, her son, both of her daughters, her sister, her brother-in-law, oh, wow. you know, they all worked here and they were invested in it because they knew that this place was, you know, where they were bringing their bacon yeah. home from. Yeah, yeah. And the whole family relied on the job, not just one person. Uh, so we try to find people like that, family-oriented people, and that's I think that's some good advice for them. What about marketing? What are you? What are your best tips for like marketing, or what do you do to get customers? I know you've been around for a long time, so it's probably a little easier for you than someone who's just starting out. But what do you suggest somebody do to kind of get the word out about their business? So depending on your budget, right? Because that's huge. Yeah. Uh, in our infancy stages, we used uh, Facebook and Instagram to get our message out. Paid advertisements on Facebook. Which isn't a lot of money. No, it could be a couple bucks. Yeah. You could identify you know, your demographics, how far you'd like to send the, the message out to. But uh, we started early with our target marketing email program. Which through a food tech, right? Through food tech solutions. I have to say, no, plug for food tech here. I've seen a lot of point of sale systems. Food tech for pizza shops like you that do delivery, takeout, dine-in. Uh, food tech is one of the most sophisticated ones because it does everything in-house text, email, right. or taking kiosks just like that it's pretty good so they're down the street they're 10 minutes away yeah. um, I get them on the line anytime I need them they're they're very they're true professionals Bruce um, but yeah getting back to the target marketing uh, we got everybody signed up with email early on in the game and we really tried to push the email we even had like a refer a friend kind of a thing yeah you know you refer a friend get a ten dollar coupon yeah. did that work good it worked well uh, we utilized QR codes in the bottom of our, our receipts we last year we rolled out our SMS text message marketing how's that working um, it's it's really good it's uh, you know it's a little slow yeah just like anything it takes time to get people uh, to sign up for it yeah and a lot of people are businesses are hesitant to they do are. text because they think that people are gonna get upset mm -hmm. I don't think people get as upset with text as they did maybe five to eight years ago right if I got a text from a business eight years ago I'd be mad so Today, I'm just like eh, delete. or you get hit stop and you know you get yeah. the messages my kids on. though who are like teenagers early 20s yep. they don't want to talk to anybody right they love text messages they sign up for everything and with these programs there's a lot of analytics right so you can measure the success yeah so you could look and you could say hey this this campaign that I just ran you know it only returned one percent for me it might not be worth it let's try something different right. um, and food is good with uh, understanding that and sharing that information what too. do you send out in emails I know a lot of people get confused like I don't know what to send out in emails do you have uh, like a do you have like a 30 60 90 day program we a do birthday thing we do so we have a 30 60 90 day we have a birthday uh, really really anything that you could think about you can just pick create it and easily HTML and just hit right save. and you know those 90 day customers who haven't visited us and for those who don't know 90 day customer yeah. who hasn't come uh, to visit the store in 90 days you know there might have been an issue that they, they, they might have been dissatisfied in some way or another so you know you could uh, send out like a survey to yeah. them to kind of find out what happened uh, and if so like offer them an incentive to come back because you, you definitely want to mend the relationship and totally yeah it's easier to get a customer to order more from you mm -hmm. and more frequently than it is to get a new customer yep and it's more cost effective too. You're better off giving your existing customer $2 off to come back again this week than trying to get somebody who doesn't know you exist to come in the first time. Do you know uh, Nick Verano? Have you heard of him? He owns the uh, uh, Stragas in the North End. Yes. And, uh, so I watched him one day. There was a podcast that he was on and he said, your worst customer can become your best customer. Yeah. Right. So like if you mend that relationship with someone, you tell them you appreciate them, they might be as hard headed as you are. But when you can come to an understanding, they will be your best customer. That's they will great. become your best customer. I'll give you a little tip here. That was something that we used to do that worked really well. We used to have, we had food tech too. And what we would do is somebody would order today, and food tech's a really sophisticated system. Not a lot of systems can do this. Somebody would order today. We would set it up in target market to trigger, to have them get an email. I think it was either two or three hours after they ordered or the next day. Mm -hmm. And it would say, hey, this is Bruce from XYZ Pizza. I saw you ordered yesterday. How was everything? And you know, nine times out of 10, it was fine. But one out of 10, it was like, you know what? I wasn't gonna say anything, mm -hmm. but you miss it. You were missing my dressing. And instead of them not returning or going to Yelp and leaving a bad review, they would just come to me and I'd be like, oh, sorry about that. Here's three or four dollars off your next order as a thank you. And they were like, they become our best customer. Right. They went from someone who, just like you said, would maybe not return or go leave a bad review to, oh my God, this place is amazing. So it's easy to do. And it's like you said, you could always have your customers be your best advocates if you just figure it out. And put in the work right and you met you had mentioned uh, you know reviews and w when you're starting up uh, your own business that's kind of my most challenging thing when I see a negative review and a lot of them aren't
aren't truthful, to be honest, yeah. right? When I, it, it bothers me so much, right? I bring it home with me. I think about yeah. it. I try to figure out, you know, what I could do to kind of get better at things. So, uh, you know, I have, take a meme, it, I have a meme about one star reviews. You do you see it? Yeah. <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah. Nobody likes those people. No. <laughs> Two, three star reviews you can yeah. handle, but yeah. one star reviews, oh. that's just a nasty person. I got one that said, uh, the owner was the rudest person I've ever met, uh, this, that, and the other, and I was in Greece. <laughs> I was here for three weeks. So yeah. I was, uh, you so, weren't even here. Yeah. Yeah. People who leave one star reviews, generally for the most part, it's just more about them than it is about you. Yeah. So you, like you said, but it's really hard. I know. If you're a creator or an mm -hmm. owner of a business, to look at a one star review and have somebody who puts it out into the world something negative about your business, yeah. it's not. E it's easy to say, don't let it bother you. Right. It's hard to do. Exactly. So is this you on that photo over here? Yeah, this is me in the photo, six, five, six years old. So this was in this location. This is my father, Andreas. You know, he was the owner, the kind of the man behind the plan. And I found these vintage uh, uh, photographs for a piece that we did uh, a couple months ago. And they were kind of hiding at the bottom of a, uh, a photo uh, box. Cool. And uh, this is uh, this is him working the register. And uh, this is the store right kind of before we did our remod. But uh, I kind of like the old vintage style better. I, I know, wish we right? could I like the really lights. bring it back. They're, I like those vintage lights. Yeah, and they this were is really you cool. with PMQ Magazine too? Uh, this is us in PMQ. So this was uh, us in a legacy 50 year PMQ piece. So uh, PMQ which, does it as like a, uh, a pizza history, almost right. like like pe pizzerias that have been around for a certain amount of time. Exactly. They kind of put in the back of the magazine and like give a little shout out and a little history about the pizzeria. So that's cool you guys are in And uh, we hit the Boston Globe uh, a couple months ago too. Uh, that was really fun. How did you get on these people's radars? I reached out to the editors. I had some help with uh, my girlfriend who does PR. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she helped me draft emails up and kind of tell them what we're about. And uh, if they like, they like the concept, they like the story. So she out. like, like what I do. I'm right. like, all right, this is what I want to say. Yep. You make it me not sound stupid. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She'll edit everything. She'll make it nice <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Uh, send it out. Yeah. That's exactly what happens to me too. Yeah. So we uh, we have another one coming out for uh, pizza today too. Oh, nice. um, I know some of these guys are your competitors. So I didn't want to talk. No about competitor. It There's no competition. But, yeah. It's all good. So yeah, it's it's been beautiful and uh, this is a historic uh, town. Yeah. Founded in 1636. So we're in the heart of Denham Square. Uh, there's a lot of history here. Nice. It's a beautiful place to be. Do you do your own delivery? We do our own delivery. What about third parties? Do you use any third party? We delivery? do third parties. What made you decide to use third parties? So initially, it's a hot topic. I know. I know. It was uh, during COVID. Yeah. Uh, sales kind of fell off. I was trying to boost sales. Uh, I had a difficult time finding delivery drivers. So my thought at the time was that our customers, we could convert them to third party customers yeah. and we could let somebody else do the work for us. But uh, that's not how it worked out. It actually got much busier. Our customers stayed with us and that just brought new business in. So do you try to convert those third party customers to your own? Uh, no, I, not really, to be honest with you, because we're, we're busy enough with our own customers. Yeah. Uh, I don't think at the moment I could handle many more deliveries per day. Uh, you know, our guy just left. He left with seven deliveries. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, thank God we have the heated bags and yeah. whatnot, but um, it's tough and it's, it's hard to find, you know, a quality driver, yeah. someone who's going to respect the road, respect your customers. Uh, you know, my guys know that, hey, you know, Bruce had a tough week this week. You know, he didn't leave us a tip. We're not going to take it out against him and be rude to him because tomorrow when we go see him, he's going to give us a $10 tip. Right, right. So, you know, it's uh, to understand that in, in today's society, especially when you're dealing with trying to support your family is, is difficult. The third party delivery drivers have no concept because they don't know the customer. They it's, just kind of uh, pick up an order. It's like they turn the app on and off yep. and they come get the order and they're just done. You know, it's difficult for those watching who have pizzerias who accept, uh, who have third parties. They're, they'll show up without a delivery bag. Yeah. <laughs> they'll leave it at your front door, especially in the winter. And they tend to uh, mix up the items. Even though there uh, are names and labels on every bag, they'll give this pizza to this customer and this bag to this and customer. And then you have to deal with it. And then we deal with it. You know, we take the loss. Yeah. Because uh, it comes out of our end. Right. But uh, most recently, you know, these are our old style delivery bags, but most recently, we have a bunch of them. They're out on the road right now. But these are the hot bags. And uh, these are incredible. Bruce, put your hand in here. Well, that's warm. Right. So they hook up via electricity uh, to this little mechanism over here. So you can put the pizza in there. It just keeps it warm while it's waiting. Yep. And I introduced uh, a heat lamp to uh, most recently kind of we run out of space, put things up here. I really want to keep the deliveries hot. Plus we're in New England. So yeah. like it's it's December, which we're lucky. It's kind of warm now. I know. But it's going to get cold real quick. And that's yep. probably very helpful. It's very helpful. It's our first year with this, with these bags, our first year with the heat lamp. What's the name of the company that you uh, This is Hotbag, hotbag.com. Um, I did a lot of research. 
I've had them for four months. They're holding up pretty well. Um, and you could also take, when the bag wears out, you could take the heating component out Swap and it out. replace it into a uh, new bag. What does the system cost? It's expensive. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, relative. I mean, you're running a business though. Yeah, so. each, uh, like this is a small bag. It holds one pizza, two pizzas. This one's like 150. Uh, the larger ones are like 175. They could go up to 200. Uh, this machine right here was about 500. Uh, this is the power station. I could plug six bags into the power station here. But like when you put it into perspective, right? Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, because if someone complains, it gets a, so say someone orders once a month right and they're a good customer and they get a bad order and they don't order anymore that could have been six hundred dollars just threw out the window it could have so you got to invest in your business this has been a great investment and the heat lamp has too yeah that's great that's a good idea it, you just obviously turn that on when it gets busy i turn it on when it gets busy and just you know finding out uh the plug that i had it in i was turning it on a friday night and the whole store would lose electricity <laughs> with trip right so uh, i had to make sure to get an electrician out yeah. here to hook up a different line so you're always it's a constant battle yeah. of like all right what can i improve what can i right. make better what can i do better and for a store that is an older store that hasn't really been uh, doesn't really have the potential to grow Expand. in certain ways right uh, we do the best we can with the infrastructure that we have all right what are we making all right Bruce I'm gonna make you a pizza to take right. home so I'm gonna poke the holes which makes uh, eliminates the bubbles uh, like you see sometimes in Italian style pizza yeah they're already pre cheese but we don't you know we don't perfect it in the beginning so we'll throw a little extra cheese on there make it nice around the edges and uh, usually we don't separate into uh, quadrants we do half and halves but you know we'll switch it up we'll throw in a couple slices of pepperoni for you what's your most popular pizza cheese and pepperoni cheese and pepperoni people like the veggie too throw some pepper and onion on there you like mushrooms yeah some mushrooms on there and leave a couple slices of cheese for you perfect and I'm just gonna top it with a little bit more cheese so it could hold all the toppings in in place so they're not falling off when you take a bite well uh will you go on that end yeah I'm gonna put it on this end over here how long does it take to go through? Seven minutes. Oh, nice. So in seven minutes, it will uh, will come right out the other side. Kind of like this one. Where that's it. And I'll slice this one up for uh, for you too. There's somebody waiting on them. So how many to go? All right. So we have somebody waiting for slices. I'm gonna throw it back in just to crisp it up a little bit. Depending on the dough and the day and the humidity, yeah. you know, we have to alter the temperature and the time on the oven. But uh, in this instance, we have uh, a couple slices to go. This is gonna be very hot. You got you put me on the spot now, Bruce. <laughs> Did a good job. There you go. Thank you. Two slice. Yeah. All right. So you know we have uh, Andros, our driver right now. He's out on six deliveries. You know, Food Tech gives us great capabilities to see exactly where Andros is. Um, it tells us which deliveries have been completed. One, two, three, four, five are completed. He's on his way to a sixth delivery, and uh, it shows us zero minutes. So he's actually in front of the, the spot. So the, the Food Tech has an app, right? Does he have it on his phone? Yeah. So when the employee comes in, they'll hit employee. They'll hit punch in. Uh, let me find a driver. When the driver go ahead, go ahead to punch in. Uh, a QR code pops up, he connects to it via his app, and that's what kind of tracks. So he tracks tells where, they, how far away they are. Right. We used to use that, it was it was very good for like, all right, so he'll be back in five minutes, mm -hmm. let's get the delivery set up exactly. for him over there. So we, you know, all he has to do is come in and go. Right, so on a Friday night, you know, we'll have six drivers on. I'll know when they're coming back. I'll line up each driver with their three, four deliveries. When they get back, they're ready to go. Customer appreciation baskets, Bruce, uh, anybody who's kind of like, I, I identified our top 10 customers and I wanted to show them our appreciation. We have uh, some red wine, some cheeses, some cookies, crackers, um, and I've been sending them out with the delivery drivers to let them know that, hey, you know, we really appreciate it. Um, I think it goes a long way because it differentiates you from someone else who doesn't show that they appreciate you. That's a great idea. And we've had some uh, great feedback and special thanks. How much does each one of those baskets cost? Uh, 70 hard. bucks. Yeah, so that's like worth it though because that's a great customer. Right. You gotta remember that. Absolutely. It's like, uh, there's always, that's over delivery under promising I they're not expecting it that but when they see it it's like wow I'm gonna remember that forever yeah uh, somebody started crying did so, they really uh, yeah it was, that's it was great